you also want to have the legendary and incredibly powerful Master Sword that devours every opponent just like you devour a pack of Smarties? Then you've come to the right place, because in this video I'll show you all the methods to obtain the Master Sword in Tears of the Kingdom along with a trick at each step to make it extremely easy. To get the Master Sword you'll need two full stamina rings and that's it! So you must have completed 20 shrines and exchanged all the spirit orbs for stamina vessels. You can do this at Hylia statues, always straight for spirit orbs for one stamina vessel. You'll find such a statue here in Lookout Landing down in the basement. If you haven't unlocked the basement yet, talk to this guy here and it will be opened. Attention, this is really important. Many people on YouTube tell you that you can also use golden extra stamina wheels obtained through food. Please don't do that, it's absolutely false information, it won't work. I have no idea why anyone would tell you that. So use two full stamina rings that look like this. If you've already exchanged all your spirit orbs for hard containers, don't worry. Go back to the basement and look at landing and if you have progressed far enough in this game, there will be a hole in this wall. Now turn right, break the rocks and talk to the cursed statue. With her you can exchange hearts for stamina and vice versa, so stamina for hearts. Ah, and by the way, the number of hearts you have does absolutely not matter if you want to obtain the Master Sword. You can have 3, 5, 30, it doesn't make a difference. But now you're probably wondering, uh, nice and all Zelda Senpai, but why do I need stamina? It's simple, because warning, spoiler alert, if you don't want any spoilers, then don't watch tutorials on YouTube, including this one. Because we have to pull the Master Sword from the head of a dragon that will try to shake Link off. So no matter which method you now choose, our goal is always to reach the head of the dragon. Method 1. The first method is by far the easiest one and it should work for everybody. Simply put, the light dragon, on whose forehead the master sword is located, follows this route. So we either wait at a tower near this route until the dragon comes by, use the tower to jump onto the dragon or we build a flying device to reach it. Be aware though that flying requires a lot of battery capacity, so the tower is probably the better choice. Now that sounds great, right friends? Well, not entirely, because there's a catch. The dragon takes about 2 hours for this route and we can't see him on the map. So you have to wait until he comes near you, see him from the surface of the earth and then fly up to him. While it's possible, there's an even more efficient way and that brings us to method 2. Method 2. In the second method we do exactly the same, okay? We either build a flying device or we use a tower to get onto the dragon. But, and this is the crucial difference from method 1, we can see where the dragon is located, allowing us to teleport to a nearby shrine or tower and jump onto the dragon from there. In other words, we save ourselves the waiting time until the dragon finally arrives at our location. All we need to do is go to the Korok forest and talk to the great Deco tree, as he can permanently tell us the dragon's location. A small side note, to get to the Korok forest you can no longer go through the forest itself, instead we must go through a cave. So simply jump into this big hole here in the ground to the right of the Korok forest and make sure to land safely without any fall damage near those two lights. Yes, yes, I know it's incredibly dark and spooky and all you want is to just get the goddamn master sword. But don't worry, it's just meant to scare you, the path is, and I know you hear this a lot these days, but it's genuinely easy. Pay attention, we'll do it together and I have plenty of tricks and tips to make it really straightforward. Tip number one, throw some bright bloom seeds by pressing R and they will light you the way. And now all you need to do is to follow those blue poles. Alternatively you can also open your map and follow the path to the Korok forest but just underground. The path is literally the exact same. When you reach the point where you can see the glowing pedestal hanging from the ceiling then you've done everything right. And now comes the only thing you absolutely must consider. Theoretically many large miasma hands are waiting for you there, wanting to slap and hug you so keep yourself as far to the right as possible and run towards the glowing pedestal we saw from a distance. If the miasma hands do find you just run as fast as possible like when your grandma used to try to give you kisses, just run away quickly. Yeah just kidding, of course we all love our grandmas. Also please don't stay in the miasma on the ground for too long, otherwise it will drain your hearts and you can only heal them again when you return to the surface or when you stand underneath a root. Once you've reached the pedestal, please activate the glowing root hanging right next to it. By doing this you light up the area and get a teleportation point, in case you want to come back here later. But for us it's time to leave the cave since we've completed it. Simply go back to the pedestal and use the sand to return to the surface. Now you'll notice, yes we finally are in the Korok forest. Exactly, because the glowing pedestal is directly under the center of the forest. 
But now pay attention and ignore everything else and first activate the shrine as we will absolutely need the teleportation point very soon. You'll quickly notice that something is not right here. The great Deku tree has a stomach ache and no Korax is speaking. This is because inside the great Deku tree there's a hole where more hugging hands and phantom ganon are waiting for you to defeat them. And yes stop I know what you're thinking. Zelda senpai are you out of your mind? I can never defeat them I just want the sword. But don't worry friends that's why I'm here because this is the very last step and after that that you can go to the dragon and get the sword and besides I have prepared some tricks that will help us massively now. First of all cook all the food you have, defense, attack, normal food, everything because we'll use it to heal ourselves in a minute. And here comes the special part, if you're playing tears of the kingdom in normal modes, maybe there will be a master mode in the future where this won't work, but if you're playing tears of the kingdom in normal mode you cannot be one hitted if your hearts are full. No matter how many hearts you have. 3, 5, 30, it doesn't matter. As long as your heart containers are full, you cannot be killed with one hit. No matter the enemy, it could even be the final boss. Therefore, our tactic is to always have full hearts. So when you get hit, you'll always have a quarter of a heart left. Always. If you get hit, heal up. Hit again, heal up and so on. That's why sometimes, and I know this sounds absolutely crazy, it's even easier with fewer hearts because you don't need to heal as much. Also, only cook food that doesn't exceed our normal heart capacity, so we don't waste any potential healing. I have no idea why other youtubers never tell you this but I guess that's what I'm here for. Now let's jump into the hole in the great deco tree and defeat the hands. Of course I have a trick for you here as well. When you draw your bow by pressing ZR also press D pad up to attach a bomb flower, a ruby or a topaz to your arrow. Now you will deal splash damage and defeat all the hands at once without any problems. Now comes Phantom Ganon but don't worry he only has 3 attacks. Firstly Phantom Ganon has this miasma puddle around him which you shouldn't step into for too long as it will drain your hearts and you can only heal them again when you return to the surface. That's why our combat tactic looks like this. We try to shoot arrows at him from a safe distance. Remember headshots deal double damage. Feel free to use your most powerful materials to enhance the arrows as we can always farm more and it will significantly simplify our fight. Also hold ZL and press X at the moment of the enemy's attack to jump in a direction and perform a flurry rush, avoiding the attack and counter attacking. When he attacks from the right jump backward, when he attacks from the left also jump backward. And if he charges quickly towards you dodge to the left or right. I also recommend carrying a one handed weapon and a shield so you can always block the attack with your shield if you miss the dodge. Uh, and always remember to fully heal yourself so you cannot be one hitted. After we have defeated Phantom Ganon teleport to the shrine in the Korok forest. By the way that's why we activated it earlier. Then go up to the great Deku tree and speak with him. He will thank you and notice that you no longer carry the master sword. And that my friends is the moment when we receive the quest to find the master sword and it gets marked on our map where the light dragon with the master sword on its head is located. Now all you need to do is to check where the dragon is on your map, teleport to a nearby sky island or tower and then jump onto it. Quick extra tip, collect all the dragon parts on its back beforehand and then shoot its claws for a claw, its horns for a horn shard or its body for a scale. However keep in mind that you can only do this once every 10 minutes. Now go to the master sword on the dragon's head, pull as hard as you can and that's it. Congratulations on obtaining the master sword in tears of the kingdom. But don't leave just yet, here are some additional details about the master sword that you should definitely know. First the master sword cannot break but when its durability is depleted it needs to rest for 10 minutes. During this time you won't be able to use it, afterward it will be fully operational again. While the master sword initially deals only 30 damage keep in mind that any material can be fused with it. Don't worry it will still look the same except that it will now emit a green glow and take on the form of the material you have fused to it upon striking. Many don't mention this but it's really important to know. Also when all your hearts are filled just like a breath of the wild the master sword can shoot a beam of light that deals 10 damage. Sure it may not seem like much but it can still be useful. The thing is if you really want to know everything about tears of the kingdom and have a perfect save file it's not enough to just know how to get the master sword. In tears of the kingdom you have to buy so many cool things like armor to be able to experience all this game has to offer. And believe me the worst feeling is seeing an awesome strong armor in a new town and not being able to afford it. And that's why you should definitely watch this video here right now as it shows you the fastest and most effective methods in all of tears of the kingdom to obtain rupees. And if you missed this it's your own fault. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.